we try, we just got done with our, I just got done running our national 15 camp and we ask all the coaches to sit with each kid and tell them some of the things they thought they did really well for the week, but then also have some discussions on what they think they need to do to continue to move forward. Yeah. If I can add to that too, thanks for that, Roger and and um, Scott here with Semi Emma Ravens over in the West Coast um, of Canada. Anyways, um, one of the questions I have for you guys is um, uh, we don't share uh, the scores, but we do share the comments. You know, what can you improve on? What you're doing well, and so that gives some really good feedback. But the real particular question that I have is: uh, last year we had some an issue where where we have our division managers who are involved in the team genius scoring and they're able to see the scores and we're not going to have that this year because, and we already explained to the parents that, Hey, your, your placement of your player or goalie isn't all based hundred percent on scores. It's, it's based on a lot of different variables. Team genius is there to assist with the process. Um, and we have several independent evaluators um, coming from outside of our association to look at the 300 players that we're evaluating each year. Anyways, where I'm going with this is in your sheet that you initially um, had, had, we went through the, the checklist. Um, typically, do you have parents or who are volunteer division managers become involved in the scoring so that they see the scores? Because I think what we're going to do this year is we're going to not allow them to see the scores because they immediately think that, well, my son who's playing in that pool or player evaluation group or whatever, got the highest score. So that automatically they, they believe that their player or goalie should be wherever they think they should be, but it's not hundred percent based on the overall score. Yeah, it's, it's a great question. 